Hello, I'm Carbo Brotherhood. I'm Vlad here. Today we are doing the Taurus G3 G2 trigger spring kit with the firing pin spring, firing pin block spring, and the sear spring. Just an introduction into the Taurus. This is our first kit here. So getting into the Taurus market, we've heard your guys' questions, demands. Let's check this, make sure this is clear. Check the chamber, bolt face, magwell, this firearm is clear. As you guys know, there's that single action. So after your racket, there's that single action pull here. And then as you let go, if I don't rack it back, right, when you're shooting, it's gonna go back to that single action. But then it has this double action restrike capability right there. So see, it's stronger pull, but this won't be happening during live fire because you're gonna be racking it back, get that single action, and then that re short reset right there. It's actually a really unique system. Taurus, I believe, is the only one that's running that right now. So it's a restrike capability there for, you know, whenever demands come in and you get a light strike or a malfunction, you're able to pull it again a second time. That was really unique with the G3 and G2 series. All right, so the firing mechanism for this is a striker fired. Taurus does call it a firing pin. So in the user manual, you're going to see it as a firing pin, firing pin sprain. So what happens here is that the firing pin is in the fully cocked position and then the DC releases it. So whenever I go to pull the trigger, right now I am not cocking that firing pin backwards. It's actually in the fully cocked position and then I'm just pulling that sear down, which we'll show when we open it up more, but just to see that action. And right here, I'm just releasing that firing pin and it's going forward. So it's a little bit different than the uh, block system, but a lot more similar like the, uh, you know, the M&Ps and the six orders. It makes that, that trigger pull really nice for that pre-travel as you can see it's very smooth very long though because of that double action so uh, I guess they sacrifice that pre-travel right so you need that pre-travel to get that double strike capability very smooth for the initial and then at the wall here and then it breaks so this one does have our spring kit in it so that you see how smooth that is and how light but I can really feel it and we'll pull out the trigger pull gauge here shortly really like this reset right here very short, tactile, so you can get those follow-up shots much quicker. You guys need to let us know if we need to make a trigger for this. And for the compatibility for the trigger spring kit, as you guys can see, we have the G3 full size, the G3C, the G2C, and the G2S, which is the single stack G2. G3C and the G2C is very similar here besides the trigger mechanism, but the firing pin spring, firing pin block spring, and sear spring are all identical. And so we're gonna be moving forward with the installation on the G2S. Before we proceed with installation, let's get a trigger pull test here with the G2S, which is very similar to the G3 series. This is brand new out of the box. Let's clear this firearm before we do this pull test. Check the chamber, bull face, magwell, this firearm is clear. Let's do a five pull average. Five pounds, seven ounces. Five pounds, nine ounces. Five pounds, 11 ounces. Five pounds, six ounces. Five pounds, 14 ounces. So let's see the five pull average. We're at just under five pounds, 10 ounces. So this is brand new out of the box. That is the single action, so after you you know, when you're actually going to be pulling this, so not in that restrike capability, which is heavier pull weight. It's in that single action right here, and just that wall. You can feel very definitive and can be pulling shots down with that pull weight. So let's get this smoother and cleaned up. The tools needed for the install, iPro, 1 8 3 30 seconds, 1 16 inch punch, M Carbo gunsmith shank tool, synthetic grease with PTFE, hammer with brass and nylon insert, M Carbo gunsmith bench block, and the M Carbo firearm and feed ramp polishing kit. Comes with gloves, microfiber cloth, flits, and three bits for polishing. To disassemble the slide, I'm going to have to pull this slide back. So I grab it with my right thumb here, pull that back slightly, and then they pull this takedown lever there, and then push this slide forward, and then pull the trigger. So, let me catch that. so pull the slide back, push the takedown lever, push it forward, and then pull the trigger. We're gonna set aside the lower assembly. We'll get to that later. Okay, before I proceed and removing the firing pin assembly here, just wanna show the differences between the G2 and the G3 series. As you can see, they use different firing pin sleeves here. G2 does have a hole inside the firing pin sleeve, as you can see here, the red one, but the G3s don't. So no performance difference here. So as you can see, the firing pin block is still the same, and then the firing pins are all still the same. So we're gonna proceed with the G2. Just wanted to point out a quick difference here in the G3. Okay, to remove the slide cap here, I'm using the 3 32nd inch punch and get in right underneath the striker here in the striker sleeve, right in there, that punch, and I'm gonna compress downward. And then to remove the slide cap, just gonna push it upward. 
punches there. I'm just trying to catch this cap. So as I take the cap out, I can now remove my punch. The striker assembly is now ready to be removed. Let's set this aside. Now to get to the fire and pin block spring, I have to remove the extractor pin here, set it on my bench block. I'm now using the 1 inch punch. I'm gonna be using my brass hammer here. And as you can see, there's that pin right inside of that extractor. So it's inside that, that smaller pin right there. Get my pin into there. Just give it a couple taps. Tapped it till the extractor came out. So as you can see, the extractor started coming out. So now I'm going to remove my pin. Now here, you gotta be very gentle. And so make sure not to remove this extractor without having it covered with my pin. Cause this pin is under tension and this will fly across the room and you will lose it. And I am talking from experience cause I did lose a couple of these. Just start that extractor, get my pin back into that hole on that top side here. So see how the extractor starting to come down here. And so I wanna get, get my pin on top of this and cover that extractor pin because it's under spring tension. And then I'm just going to compress it with my pin and remove the extractor. Now I'm going to carefully cover it with my thumb just in case I slip, remove that pin. And there it is. So there's that pin under spring tension that will fly across the room if you don't cover it with your thumb as you remove this pin. Now you don't have to remove the extractor. You can just set it aside, pull it out here. Take the extractor spring out so we don't lose that. On that note, I like to use an ammo can here to kind of store all my small parts so that I don't lose them or roll off the table. Now I'm going to flip the assembly upside down, the slide, and then the safety block's gonna come out and the extractor pin here under spring tension. Just carefully. So there's my firing pin safety block and fire and pin safety block spring that we're going to be replacing here. And there's that extractor pin that wants to fly out. The spring is still in there, so I'm going to get the spring out of the slide. Going to be placing the small parts that I'm not gonna be working on into this bin. There's the slide. And so now I'm just ready to place the side aside. Now that we have the fire and pin block out of the slide, I'm going to remove the spring. It's heavily greased, as you can see inside here, to hold it in place. So there's the factory one. Now to replace the firing pin spring here, we have to disassemble the firing pin assembly. And so now I'm going to use the bench block. I'm gonna use this corner here, this little plus sign. I'm gonna place the sleeve into there like that. Catch it on the striker lug so then it doesn't move. And then now I'm going to grab it by the spring, not by the cups. So I'm grabbing it by the spring because I need to remove the cup. So grab it just underneath the cups here on the spring, pushing downward and then pulling the cups out with my other hand and then now it's gonna come out. Now be careful, because inside of here, there's the firing pin return spring there, so as you can see there, so you don't wanna lose that as I remove this out. I'm gonna be placing that into my bin also. Now that we have the firing pin assembly fully disassembled, I'm going to be polishing the firing pin lug face here that contacts the sear to get a really smooth trigger pull here, and that break will really feel crisp and smooth instead of some grit. I'm gonna bring out the polishing kit, and let's start polishing this firing pin lug right here. Here's the M Carbo polishing kit here. So I'm going to be opening this up. It does get, start to spray everywhere. So make sure you do have your iPro on. Here's the flitz. It's really just gonna polish that surface, not remove any material. Here's the polishing bits. So if, after you purchase the kit, we do sell these as spare as the 10 pack. Okay, now that we're set up with the gloves, the Dremel and the bit, I'm gonna open up my flitz. I'm gonna put just a little dab in here. I'm gonna really concentrate on that lug face up right there. That contacts the sear. So I'm gonna start off in a low speed. Some on this lug there. The contact with the sear is about 60,000, so you don't need to go all the way down. But if you do go more, it's, it doesn't hurt. I'm gonna clean that up, and now you can see that mirror, mirror polish right there on that interface. That's really gonna smoothen up that grit and that trigger pull. And so now the firing pin is finished and I'm gonna bring bringing out the firing pin block. Okay, so the contact surface for the firing pin block is gonna be this top surface with the trigger bar. So that's what gets compressed. Whenever you pull the trigger, it compresses this to move out of the way for the firing pin to be able to move. Otherwise, it catches here on the firing pin. And so this is one of your safeties and this will really add some grit right here on the top surface with your trigger bar. And so we're gonna be polishing up just this top surface up here. So again, I'm gonna be dipping into the flitz, get some on that surface. OK, 
Okay, now let's wipe that down. And now look at that mating face here. Remove that grit and look how nice and shiny and nice mirror polish that is right there after that polishing job. That's really gonna affect that trigger pull for that smoothness and really gonna be able to feel that. Okay, let's set aside our polishing kit and let's get the M Carbo custom springs inside. Okay, now that we have the polished firing pin block and firing pin, I'm going to bring out the M Carbo trigger spring kit, get this opened up and get our springs in. The firing pin block spring is inside the small bag here with the sear spring. Take out the firing pin block spring here, leave the sear spring in the bag for later. So I'm going to use some of this synthetic grease here, put it on the spring just like that factory one had it. Really helps locate it and keep it in place so then we can install this back in. So just a little bit on the end there, get it. So now it holds it in place, I can place that back in the slide. So you can see the slide is on, for the firing pin block is on the left the extractor out of the way and see it drops right down. If it's not dropping down, just move the extractor a little more out of the way. Now I have to get the extractor pin and spring. I'm also gonna put some synthetic grease on the factory extractor spring here, just so I can assemble it back together. Now that it's held together, place it into that right side hole. So it drops in just like that. Now I need to get my extractor spring back. This one's already heavily coated in grease. So the extractor spring sits right there on the extractor seat pocket and I'm going to try to compress my extractor. But now it's hitting the firing pin block here. So I have to compress the firing pin block to start moving the extractor, as you can see there. Make sure the extractor spring is perpendicular. As you can see, it's getting bent out there. So Gonna grab my 1 inch punch, line that up a little better, there you go. And then compress my firing pin block, get it started. And then now I have to compress the extractor pin here. There we go. So I have to compress the firing pin block here and the extractor pin here to be able to move the extractor into this position. Be careful in this position because if this extractor gets pulled out, then the extractor pin here is under tension and it will fly out. So I'm keeping my left thumb here on this at all times because I do not want this to come out because that is under speed tension and you will lose it. Just verify that the extractor pin is below the extractor here, which it is. Now I'm ready to compress here and I'm gonna use my 3 seconds inch punch to really compress this down. And you'll hear a click once it's in. So I just heard a little click. So now you can see that the pin is inside the extractor and actually locating it and holding it. The extractor is also, as you can see, inside of the slide. Now I'm just gonna verify the operation of the firing pin block. Just compress it a few times here, make sure it's all smooth. Feels good. Now we're ready to move on to the firing pin assembly. Okay, so now I'm going to grab the firing pin and then the firing pin return spring here. Slide it over the firing pin first all the way to the rear. And now we're gonna use the firing pin sleeve. Slide it from the rear opening here. Going forward. Get that spring inside of there. There's your firing pin return spring. Now we're ready to place the M Carbo firing pin spring on it. Slide it over the firing pin here. I'm gonna use that same T-zone in that bench block here. Gonna place it down on the striker lug. And now as I compress the firing pin spring here downward, I need to have the cups ready on my right hand, insert them. So I push them down past that first section on the firing pin and then insert the cups one by one. So as you can see here, the cups need to go past that first section. So you need to compress that spring, place the cups one by one with the bench block and that T-zone, it really makes it much easier. Now that we have the firing pin assembly fully assembled, I'm going to insert it back into the slide here. Slide it in, and I'm gonna use my 3 seconds inch punch, compress that sleeve downward, get the punch in there, just like that. And then I'm gonna get that slide cap ready, and I'm gonna compress the punch towards the front of the firearm, and then gonna slide the slide cap over. So there's me compressing the firing pin sleeve, slide the slide cap over. And just like that, the slide assembly is now back fully assembled. To verify my installation was done correctly, I'm going to disassemble the recoil spring. So I push downward here to pop it out of the barrel, remove the recoil assembly, and then to remove the barrel, I push it upward here and out, slide it out this way. 
Now I want to look at the breech face here for the firing pin hole. What I want to do is make sure that when I push on the firing pin forward, the firing pin doesn't come out of that breech hole here. And that verifies that the firing pin block here is fully operational and my firing pin cannot fire unless the trigger is pulled and compresses the firing pin block. Now let's compress the firing pin block here and push the firing pin forward. And now we see the tip coming out. So it's fully operational. After performing the function test, gonna put the barrel back inside in the recoil assembly, inserting the plastic portion first. As you can see, the larger OD spring goes in the front. And then I need to push the recoil assembly forward a little bit just to lock into that barrel lug right there. Slide assembly is complete, and now we're ready to move on to the lower assembly. Before we disassemble the lower assembly, we're going to look at how this functions. So we can see here on the trigger bar, there is a section here that compresses the firing pin block. So there it is right here, right? So we're gonna be polishing that because that mates with the firing pin block. As we look at the trigger bar moving to the rear, there's that lever that comes up here that is part of the restrike capability. So it grabs the striker, as you can see, it goes forward and then it grabs the striker and it's able to release it a second time. So without engaging the sear. And so that's actually the innovation here in the Taurus line, in the G3 and G2. And we can polish that to really smoothen up that restrike capability. We're really gonna be focused on the sear mating lug right here with the firing pin. Now that we understand how the mating surfaces and the trigger mechanism works here, we're gonna be removing the takedown lever here. And so this spring is also very easy to lose here. I'm gonna use the 1 inch punch. There is a plunger here with a spring underneath the takedown lever, pushing it upward. And so I'm gonna get in front of that takedown lever with my punch, compress that plunger. With my thumb, I'm gonna move that takedown lever downward all the way down to the bottom and then push out. Be careful here towards the end as I'm pulling it out so that uh, I don't lose that plunger and spring because it is under spring tension. So just make sure to watch my after I get it out, I'm gonna take my thumb just to play it safe over the punch as I decompress. So I'm covering that just in case so it doesn't go flying. And there it is taken out. I'm gonna flip the assembly upside down, get that spring out. There's the spring and the plunger. Now that we have the takedown lever out, need to remove the three roll pins. As you can see, one in the front, two in the rear. I'm gonna use the 1 inch punch on the small one here and then the 3 32 inch punch for the two larger ones. I'm gonna set it down on my bench block because I don't want to scratch up my gun or the table. Gonna line up that large one in for that middle hole. Gonna use our hammer. Just a note, new firearms are gonna take a little more taps. And now that I got the two large ones with the 332s, now I'm moving down to the 116s and gonna do that last roll pin here on the bottom. Just a note not to damage your firearm. The 116 inch punch will stop with, before the pin comes all the way out. So as you can see, the punch is maxed out. So do not keep going. This is far enough for us to remove the sear housing. So I'm going to leave it right there. So do not just keep punching because then you will start damaging this side of your firearm. I like to use the 1 inch punch to get some leverage here. So for the rear side, so you can see this part of the frame here, but then the sear housing starts here. So I like to leverage this up, especially if it's a new firearm and get that started right here. Going upward to remove it. While I was prying out the sear housing here, the manual safety sphere flew out and the disconnector came out from the other side. So I'm gonna rotate this over and to remove the sear housing, it's right now just attached by the trigger bar. So I'm gonna rotate the trigger bar here to slide it out. And now I have the sear housing out, set that aside. Also gonna place my safety sphere inside my bin before I get, that gets lost. That's also a very small part. Okay, now we can focus on removing the front portion. I also like to use that leverage to Pry that front portion up right here on the rails. And once I get enough, it's still tight. So, so 
I knew where the firearm, the tighter that's going to be. So good enough to get my hand and wiggle that out of the frame. And now it's just the polymer frame remaining here, the mag release, so I can set that aside. Here is the trigger housing here with the slide stop. As we can see, the trigger bar spring here on the trigger. We're not going to be replacing that because we really wanted a really positive reset on the spring kit. So we did not want to affect the reset. And this is the spring that resets your trigger. So we did make one and we really just didn't like it during testing and really made it lagged. And we don't want to slow down your follow-up shots. We actually want to make it faster and better. So we did not make a trigger bar spring here for the spring kit. We're going to set this aside. We will polish up the trigger bar here a little bit and this contact point here, but let's get to the sear housing first. So if your disconnector didn't fall out, this is where it's located. So we can just take that out. It's not spring loaded or anything. It's actually just contacts the trigger bar. So pull that out, put it in the bin. And then the manual safety sphere goes between the manual safety and the sear housing here. So you can move up the manual safety and pull out the ball here. And to remove this manual safety, I'm just gonna pull outward and then rotate it out. So I was just rotating it and wiggling it out here on the outside of here. Going to set that aside. And now we have our sear and sear spring inside of here. So we need to start by removing the sear pin. I'm gonna be removing from left to right if this was facing the front of the firearm. I'm gonna use my 1 inch punch, placing it to this hole here. So as you see, I compress it. You can see the sear getting loose. Get that pin all the way out, set that aside. As I remove my punch, the sear assembly is just gonna fly out. There's the factory sear spring here. Now I'm going to push the sear down and out of the assembly. There it is, it's gonna come out the bottom. Now that we have the sear housing completely disassembled, I can set that aside and get ready for polishing. I have my polishing kit set back up and I am going to start by polishing the mating surface here of the sear with the firing pin lug that we polished earlier. Going to be this edge right here. Going to clean the sear back up, and now you can really see that mirror polish. There it is on that mating contact with the firing pin lug. Now that we got that mirror polish, we can move on to the trigger bar. Okay, so I'm going to be polishing the trigger bar on the mating surface up top here. Really concentrate on that top surface here that mates with the firing pin block. And the restrike capability mates with the firing pin right here on this top face of the trigger bar. You can remove the trigger bar from the entire housing, but the trigger bar spring here is pretty difficult to install and uninstall, so we're gonna be just doing it inside of the trigger housing here. Clean up the excess flits from the assembly and the trigger bar. Make sure to clean it really nicely. Now that it's cleaned up and wiped down, look at those results. You see that nice mirror finish here. This is a stamped part, so you know there could be burrs from the manufacturer, and you can see that finish just really isn't as smooth as that nice polishing job right there. So that's really going to clean up that uh, double action restrike capability, and then this is going to clean up both of the actions. Now we're ready to place the sear back into the sear housing. So the sear housing facing forward, so to the left. The lug here that catches the firing pin lug is gonna be facing to the rear. I'm going to be inserting this facing upward. And these guide channels here are gonna slide right in. I'm gonna use my shank tool to guide it on in there. And as now you can see the guides tabs are now here in the upper section. Now I'm going to flip the assembly upside down, placing my finger on the bottom here to keep the sear from flipping over on the bottom side here. And I'm going to take the sear spring pin. The hole that it goes into here is the top hole here. As you can see, the OD of the bottom hole is larger. So it's going to be inside of this smaller OD. As you can see here, my pin is coming out. So I need to catch that into the sear. So I need to pull this out of the sear housing slightly, move the sear up, and then move the pin until I get it into that channel. So 
So as you can see here, the pin is inside of the sear. And now I'm going to back it out slightly, not all the way, just into, so it's not inside that middle section there, right there. So I'm going to back it out till there. And now we're ready to install the sear spring. The sear housing is upside down. The pin went in from the right side. We caught the sear with the sear orientation correctly. And I'm going to be placing that down, get the sear spring ready. Now looking at the sear spring, you can see one section here has an extended leg here. And so that orientation is gonna make a difference here. So as we can see in the sear, there's a little cutout. You can see it here, that cutout inside the sear, a little groove right there. And so that's where that extended leg is gonna go. So I'm gonna lower this down in there with that leg aiming for that groove. I'm gonna use my shank tool to move around the spring until that grooves. As you can see, it's misaligned right now. Okay, my sear spring leg is now inside of that groove in the sear. We need to compress the sear spring all the way downward until that pin. So what I'm gonna do is use the shank tool, that groove right here in that shank tool. That's why this tool is very critical for the installation of the sear spring. And I'm gonna catch that leg up on the top section here of the coils. So the coils right here in the middle. I'm gonna catch the top section here, compress it down. And then once it's centered in, inside of the sear, then I'm gonna push the pin through the center of that sear. So now I'm ready to push that sear spring down with my shank tool. That leg is inside the groove. My pin isn't all the way through this sear, but it's holding this sear from moving downward. So as you can see my pin here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push this downward with the shank tool, and then my finger is gonna push the pin through the center of that sear spring. So push it downward with the shank tool. There it is. So now I am inside of this here. I'm pushing downward with my shank tool on top of the OD. And then now I'm going to push this pin in. And you can see the pin is going through the sear spring. So that is the most difficult part of the install is, so I take the shank tool and I was placing it towards the front. So on top of the sear spring OD right here. I got the groove on the sear spring, just like that. And then I was pushing downward. Also the micro tip was rotated because if you try to go just straight down, it won't go and it won't fit inside of that sear. So I had to rotate the shank tool at a 45 degree angle to fit it inside of that sear. And then as I got it into the sear, I was just able to hold it and then slip the pin in. And there is a correctly installed sear spring. Now that we have the sear and sear spring assembled into the sear housing, I'm going to take the manual safety lever, I'm gonna insert it from the right side in this orientation, which is the front of the barrel facing towards me. Take that leg, slide it into there, and push downward while just gently wiggling it down into there. Now that it's inside of the sear housing, I'm going to line it up there. Now I'm going to get the manual safety sphere in between the manual safety and the sear housing. As you can see here is the location of where the manual safety sphere goes. So there's the manual safety sphere now in location and I'm going to keep the manual safety compressed with my finger as I finish the rest of the install so that we can keep tension on that sphere here. So I'm just gonna put general pressure there just so that it doesn't fly out while I'm installing. Up next, I'm going to do the disconnector. It goes on the pin here. If there isn't any spring tension, so it just slides on like that. Now that we have the sear housing fully assembled, we're ready to place the trigger housing into the polymer frame. So set aside the sear housing. Be careful of that manual safety sphere coming apart. The trigger housing, line up the trigger with the trigger opening. Here's the locating tab with the polymer frame here. Just line that up. There. And then insert it by pushing downward. Look through the holes and it's all fully aligned. Now we are ready for the sear housing to be connected to the trigger bar and pushed inside. As I get ready to assemble this, I'm also staying conscious of the manual safety sphere here and keeping pressure on that manual safety. Raise the trigger bar here, rotate this at a 90 degrees, insert the trigger bar into the sear housing, rotate it back, and now I'm going to line it up with the frame here on that rear side here, and I'm going to push down while always keeping that pressure on that manual safety. Now it slides downward. Manual safety, I can give it a quick test while keeping pressure. Yep, my manual sphere is in there. Now that the sear housing and the trigger housing is 
inside of the polymer frame, we're ready to place the roll pins back in. Going to lay the firearm on the bench block to not scratch the table or the firearm. The smaller roll pin that's sticking out is first. I'm going to use the hammer to get it started, and once it gets close to the frame to not damage the frame, I'm going to use the punch. After placing the first roll pin in, the other two roll pins, there's a difference in length. So the larger and longer roll pin goes in the front of the firearm, and the shorter and smaller roll pin goes in the rear. Got it started with just a hammer, and then same thing, going to use the punch towards the rear to not damage the firearm. Now that the roll pins are fully assembled, I like to check both sides, make sure none of them are sticking out. And now we're ready to move on to the takedown lever. Begin by placing the takedown lever spring and plunger inside of the hole here. As you can see on the takedown lever, there's a ramp on the front there. And so that ramp needs to be facing forward. We're gonna be inserting it from the left side to the right with that ramp facing forward. So I'm going to get it started here. And as I compress this with the 1 inch punch, I need to be careful to not slip because under that spring tension it will fly. So I'm going to compress that while inserting the takedown lever. So again I'm compressing it from the front side. Now that I got the takedown lever all the way across I release and now the takedown lever is fully functional. Now that the takedown lever is installed we are ready to grab our slide assembly slide it over, rack it, and now is the time I like to check the function of all the components, make sure the manual safety is operational, cannot pull the trigger, make sure it fires, slide stop, take down lever. Let's take a look at the trigger up close now in the single action, still very smooth pre-travel. But now at the wall, a nice, smoother trigger pull reduction here to be able to get that more accurate shot without pulling your shots downward. Let's jump to the trigger pull test and let's see our trigger pull reduction. Three pounds, 15 ounces. Three pounds, 11 ounces. Three pounds, 11 ounces. 3 pounds, 12 ounces, 3 pounds, 15 ounces. Going to take that average, 3 pounds and 5 ounces average for a trigger pull test that we started off at 5.5 pounds. So we really just dropped that 2 pounds in trigger pull. That, that polishing job really helps smooth out that grit. That's a really smooth trigger now and breaks really nice right at that wall. Still has that positive reset because we didn't touch the trigger bar spring, so that reset's still very positive, but now you're not going to be pulling shots and getting more accurate with your firearm. All right, thanks for watching. If you guys made it all the way through the polishing and installation, if you guys want to see us do more parts for the Taurus, let us know. We really do like the Taurus firearms, the Striker fired, the G2 and G3 lines, and let us know if you guys want to see us get into the GX4s. I really do see some improvements that we want to work on, but let us know so then we can really get on top of it early. If you guys have any questions, email us help at mcarbo.com or on our website, support.mcarbo.com. Thank you.